Um, NBA draft uh, this Wednesday. I'm actually excited about this about this draft. Uh, I really want to see what, what Golden State does with that number two pick. Do they keep the pick and and draft James Wiseman? Do they trade the pick? You know, I, like I'm I'm really interested because I don't I don't I don't see them drafting Lamelo or Anthony Edwards just because you got Stephen and, and, and Clay there, and I think they're gonna they're gonna want somebody who can help them immediately. And I don't, you know, so I don't know if, if either one of those guys is the, is ready to, I right, just be going on a deep playoff run, you know what I'm saying, at least the Western Conference Finals. I don't know if either one of those two guys is ready just yet. Um, and I, and but I think what, if, you, if you're talking about Wiseman and you, and you draft Wiseman, you know, I think he could help them out more immediately just because it's a position that they could use help at. And if you if you bring in a young guy like that, where well, he pretty much just has to rebound, block shots, play some defense, and get a couple of tip in baskets, I think it could it could work for them. But they may want to trade the pick and get a and get some a, a veteran that can help them definitely win right now. Um, but what do I, you yep. think they should do with that pick? Uh, I think it's it's tough to say what they should do because obviously we don't quite know what the offers are which is a little strange because normally this time of year we hear about the type of offers that are being floated around, which leads me to believe that it is going to be a hectic week of trades and, and a lot of moving around, especially on draft night. Um, if they get the right offer for uh, the right big man, I think you make the move. Um, you trade the pick. I I would not be surprised if they dangled the number two pick for Miles Turner and Victor Oladipo. And, you know, you get Miles Turner, you, you get your legitimate center now, you get Oladipo who becomes another guard, um, that you can play off the bench and, and strengthen your bench and almost let him play similar to the way Andre Udala used to play for you as your, as your super sub and your six man. Um, I wouldn't be surprised, you know, if they went after a young big man, similar to Mitchell Robinson. I've said in the past that I think the Knicks should really offer the number eight pick along with Mitchell Robinson to get up to number two. I love that. And if you're Golden State, yeah, I think if you're Golden State, you take the pick, you take that move because Mitchell Robinson immediately becomes your starting center and you still get that eighth pick to still draft the young guy, you know, for your bench. Um, I, I do agree with you, though. I think if Wiseman's there, I think Wiseman would be very tough for them to pass up on because I think Wiseman extends their window. Wiseman is so skilled as a big man that even though he won't be a big time contributor right now, Wiseman potentially could be one of the most dominant big men in two to three years. And we know Clay and Steph, their shooting ain't going nowhere. Even when they get older, they still gonna be able to shoot the ball. Yeah, they they you know they still gonna be able to shoot the ball. So I think you get Wiseman. You're gonna be a playoff team next year anyway. Is Wiseman good enough to get you over the hump against the Lakers? No, probably not. But two years from now, when he's probably the best big man in the game, and you still got those lethal shooters, now you might have something special. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if they make multiple moves because you have Wiggins contract that I think you can either package with a pick. They remember they own Minnesota's first round pick next year. So you can also, you can always take that first round future first with Wiggins and package that for something as well. I think if Wiseman's there though, you got to take Wiseman. If he's not there, then you move the pick. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Um, if I'm the Knicks, I'm, and, and, and I love Mitchell Robinson. You know what I'm saying? I'm not the Knicks fan or nothing like that. But I, I really love Mitchell Robinson. I love his game. But I think that his game is is perfect for Golden State, who needs to win now. And are you going to pay Mitchell Robinson the money it's going to cost to keep him if you're the Knicks and you're not even in the mid middle of the pack as far as in the Eastern Conference right now? It doesn't make sense to me. Now, what does make sense, though, is, all right, listen, we got the eighth pick. It's only six picks back from the second pick. Golden State could use a Mitchell Robinson, and I think they would be intrigued by the idea of bringing in a, gr uh, a great defensive shot-blocking, rebounding big man, because I could definitely see Mitchell Robinson going to Golden State and averaging 14, 15 points, 10, 11 rebounds, and two blocks a game. Golden State, like there's literally no pressure on him. It's pretty much just yo, all you have to do when you come here is play defense, rebound, and block shots. We will take care of the rest. We're gonna get you your baskets, you're gonna get your touches, so you can have the offense that you that you want. You know what I mean? Just all you gotta do is make your shots into the basket 
and, and be our anchor on the defensive end and this thing can work. And then if you're the Knicks, now you got the number two pick in the draft. Do you still do you draft draft Wiseman and and still make that move for, for Russell for uh, Russell Westbrook? Because that's a possibility too. If you're not giving up too much for Westbrook, now you could be in good shape. Right. Brook, RJ Barrett, and James and James Wiseman. I kind of like how that how that thing looks. Right. You know what I'm saying? And we know, you know, what Westbrook is still somebody who can average double digit assists. So he can find oh, yeah. those guys. He can find James Wiseman and get him in his touches in the paint and, and help him to become a dominant big in this league. Same thing with RJ Barrett. He'll take off a lot of the pressure that RJ Barrett has because anybody coming into, especially a young guy that's drafted by the Knicks, there's a, a extreme amount of pressure already on you because it's the Knicks, it's Madison Square Garden, it's the Mecca. And, you know, so everything is just increased and they're losing. So it's like, all right, we drafted this guy high in the draft. Is he going to be the one to turn it around? So we drafted this guy. He was high. He didn't do it. We drafted that. We drafted Frank. He didn't do it. We drafted Porzingis. We had to get him out of here. You know what I'm saying? We we drafted all of these guys. Like the Knicks have had top five picks, and you know what I'm saying? And and it just and it just has not panned out. So there's a lot of pressure every time someone is drafted high for the Knicks. But I think if you can make that trade with, with Golden State. Get that second pick draft wise, man, because I don't, I'm like, I don't just, it's probably slim to none of a chance that Minnesota drafts wise, man. It just, it just doesn't make sense because yeah. you got, you got towns there already and you don't, you're not going to stunt James Wiseman. They both play the same position. It's not like he's a power forward and then you got the center. That's one thing. They're not drafting him. They're, nope. they're going to draft either Edwards or, or, or LaMelo Ball. I think it's probably going to be Edwards just because D'Angelo Russell is, is already there playing the point guard so i think from you know from that standpoint you're good but if you're the knicks and you can make that trade happen now you got wiseman or you know you could still go to Lamelo ball route and draft Lamelo ball and and, and trade some of those because again one thing i did like that the knicks did was you know when when you had the big free agent rush with uh when lebron went to to, to la ace only signed guys for one to two years so mm-hmm. all of those guys are either on aspiring contracts or, you know, they, they're easily, easily movable. So they can make some, some noise with those pieces that they have and just spread things around. And again, too, maybe, you know, you can find somebody else for those, for those guys, whoever, whatever they do, but I think it would be something for the Knicks to look into um, trying to trade uh, Mitchell Robinson for that. that second. Yeah, I think I think the Knicks are gonna are already in discussions to try to get there. I've been hearing different rumors um, about some of the workouts or some of the interviews. I say that Golden State has been having, and people have been kind of curious as to the guys they're they're interviewing because the guys they've been interviewing are all range to go anywhere from five to ten. So, which leads everyone to believe, including myself, that obviously they're shopping a number two pick, and they're probably going to move down anywhere from number five to number ten. And, and pick up more assets, you know, or pick up a veteran in, in that trade. Um, if I'm the Knicks and, and you made the point, Mitchell Robinson, because he was a second round pick, is going to be a free agent after this season, right? We got to tender him. I don't think he's going to, I don't think for us, he should get that first max contract. I, he, he doesn't fit in that role. Now, for another team, like you said, like Golden State, it's a perfect opportunity. There's no pressure on him to score offensively. And he could be over there and, and do some of the same things DeAndre Jordan used to do with the Clippers. But exactly. for us, we need more. For the amount of money that he's going to require, we need more, more production. So it doesn't fit our timeline. I think the Knicks do try to move up. Um, I think if, if if it's ball, if it's between ball or Wiseman, it's really about whoever they have graded higher on their board. Whoever they feel higher about. I personally have, have said for a long time, I want it to be LaMelo Ball. I, I just think that is very rare when you get a, a point guard with that type of vision at that size, we're talking about a six, seven ball handler who people have already said, like he has NBA talent, NBA vision already as a teenager, his game is only going to get better as he gets more consistent offensively. And as he starts just playing the game more consistently, again, as a teenager, a lot of these guys are playing 30 games, 20 games a year. So we're seeing glimpses of what they can be. Over a course of an 82-game schedule, you start to see guys really grow into who they are as a player. I think he's truly dynamic. And I also think that because he's 6'7", it gives you the roster flexibility to build it however you want. 
This isn't your traditional point guard who's 6'1", 6'2", and he can only play point guard. At 6'7", you can surround him with shooters and defensively have him playing, have him playing the three, similar to what Luka does, similar to what Ben Simmons does, right? Those, those teams have flexibility because their point guard is so big. So the Knicks with him could have that opportunity, but I do think James Wiseman especially, and if you trade Mitchell Robinson, it probably makes the most sense to get James Wiseman, who is the upgrade, the replacement, who's younger and on a cheaper contract. Smush Parker here, formerly up to the Los Angeles Lakers, and you are now tuned in to Real Fans Real Talk.